Good afternoon and welcome to another Ethical Corporation webinar on activating the SDGs into business operations. I'm Ed Long, Project Director at Ethical Corp, and I will be moderating alongside my, con uh, my colleague, Candy Talani, in today's webinar. The SDGs have been a hot topic in sustainability since their inception, with businesses, governments, and the NGO community widely accepting them as the roadmap for the future. From, for our webinars, we usually average between 1,000 to 1,500 signups. Today's webinar has over 2,500. Reflecting the interest and enthusiasm to crack this topic is clear to see. Today, you will hear from experts on how to implement the SDGs into your business operations and create the disruptive change required to change the world's current path. We will cover picking the right SDGs to suit your business. There's 17 goals, 129 targets, and 880 indicators. It can be a very daunting challenge and task to start. Identify the right partners to drive this change. Discover how businesses are forecasting these future positive impacts on business, the industry, society, and the environment. Today, joining, joining us, we have Mario Abreu, Vice President of the Environment at Tetra Pak, Louise Koch, Corporate Sustainability Lead at Dell, and Arius Veretos, Program Director at Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership. Unfortunately, Pedro Orton um, from the Euro European Commission has had an emergency and is unable to be with us today. However, um, Pedro will be talking on the topic in June at the Responsible Business Summit Europe on the 13th and 14th with Lisa Kingo, the CEO and Exec Director of the UN Global Compact. Today's one hour webinar will be in the form of presentations followed by a focused discussion where the speakers will be sharing ideas and lessons learned when integrating the SDGs into business. Before we begin, I'd like to emphasize that this is an interactive discussion. On the right hand side, you'll see a box where you can post your questions. Please do post your que key questions throughout the discussion and we'll hope to get these answered um, within the hour. Um, to start off with, we, we would like to run a couple of polls for those listening. Firstly, um, the first question is, is your organization integrating the SDGs into business strategy? Now, I'll give you a little, little bit of time just to answer that. It's yes or no. Okay, just a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. So the answer to that is a resounding yes. We've got 69% um, for yes and 31% saying for, a, for the no. For those that have said no, um, please do share your questions with regards to this um, and what you found most difficult in achieving the integration. Um, again, we'll try and get to these points across the discussion. And the second uh, poll we'd like to run um, is just, is your organization measuring its contributions to the SDGs? So that's, if you could give your answers to that one, please, that'd be fantastic. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so that's uh, interesting uh, findings on that. You've got 40% for yes and 60% for no. Um, we've actually recently asked uh, similar questions in a, in a survey we, we've um, produced recently. The results to the first question were quite similar. It was two thirds saying yes, they are integrating the SDGs into business strategy. And again, that was flipped. Um, with regard to the second question in terms of measuring your contribution. Uh, so again, two thirds saying no, they weren't, and then two thirds and a third saying they, they were uh, measuring their contributions. Aris, um, just to bring you into the, to the conversation, do you have any thoughts on um, the, the response to those, uh, to those polls at all? Um, sorry, Aris. Um, um, what were your thoughts on that? Sorry. Sorry. Um, there is. Um, there is. Um, I think it is interesting to see those results. You would expect, you know, the SDGs are a recent development. So 
um, you wouldn't expect all the monitoring and, and performance and measurement systems to have aligned on the one hand. On the other, you would expect organizations that have integrated the, the goals into their strategy to have integrated it um, in a way that, you know, the strategic KPIs, for example, align with the goals. And hence, you would expect more similar responses, so similar levels, whether it's high or low, but you'd expect the companies that have integrated in the strategy to also measure them um, to, to a degree. And there's clearly a little bit of a gap there between actual integration and, and what we sometimes believe to be broader activities, but not directly related to strategy. Interesting. Thanks very much for the um, feedback on that, Aris. Um, so we're, we're going to crack on with the um, presentations now. So to start things off, um, we're going to go to Louise at Dell. Um, so if you'd like to, to run through um, how you're um, activating the SDGs into your business operations, um, Louise. Hello, everybody. Seems like now I am green and I can speak. So thank you, Ed, and thank you, everybody, for tuning in to, to this seminar today. I am um, leading corporate sustainability for Dell in Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and happy to share our work. And first of all, we completely agree that the UN Sustainable Development Goals are, are now the, the global roadmap for a more sustainable future. And they're also unique because they are the outcome of a truly global and collaborative process across sectors, which I believe is also the first uh, first time in history. Um, so that gives it strength, but also poses some challenges that we will get back to in terms of the, the integration into business strategy. of impact. Organizers, could you confirm that I am on sound and everything is working? Yep, yeah. you're, you're, you're all okay, Louise. Thank you. Great. So um, before diving into uh, how we are integrating the SDGs, which we are in, in three different ways, let me give you a kind of a view of where we are today on our sustainability journey, because this is obviously not something that that just started yesterday or or at um, at the time of uh, of the launch of the Sustainable Development Goals. Our CSR strategy is called Our Legacy of Good Plan 2020, which we launched in 2013. Um, this current strategy, of course, taking over from, from a former strategy, and it's based on 22 very specific sustainability goals for 2020 who are um, that are building on these four pillars uh, around supply chain, so ensuring good working conditions and environmental protection and transparency in our supply chain. It's about environment, uh, both ensuring uh, sustainable product design at every step of the way in the life cycle of our products, from design to packaging to use to end of life. And it's also minimizing our own um, impacted footprint. So, so our carbon emission goals would be here as well. Uh, it's people, which is about um, our own workforce where we're driving diversity and inclusion, uh, really making sure that there's equal opportunities for everybody, no matter what gender or sexuality or ethnicity you come with. Um, and last but not least, our community engagement, where we are combining funding and volunteering expertise and technology to drive especially youth learning programs and pediatric cancer care. So these are the goals that we have already um, and where we're reporting our progress every year. Now, let me go to the next slide here, which suddenly seems not to load. There we go. So first of all, our first approach is to map our relation to existing, um, map the SDG relation to existing programs. Uh, and of course, this is uh, what is sometimes called the sticker exercise, where you take uh, the different stickers here and put them on, on the, the programs that you have already. 
Now, this is, of course, easy to do. Uh, what we did was to go a little deeper, of course, um, and map according to the uh, the indicators uh, and see which ones were were relating to our goals. And and what we found was that that our programs are already supporting all of the 17 indicators in all of the 17 goals. Um, but where we are especially strong are on on the four, uh, five goals I have highlighted here. So SD4, 8, 12, 13, and and 14. And what is interesting to see as well is that in the SDG document, uh, only um, only six percent of targets and indicators mention uh, ICT directly, uh, but it is expected to be an enabler of impact for all 17 goals and, and at least 50 percent of the targets. Now, this is important to keep in mind because this means that in terms of measuring impact, we're talking about a lot of indirect impact. And if you're into impact measurement, you know that this is where it can get tricky. Now, just zooming in on uh, on some of our uh, two of our existing programs here, um, in terms of quality education, this is where we have one of the direct uh, targets, which is access to to digital skills and also digital uh, ICT in in schools and education. Uh, we are running a youth learning program around the world where we're focusing on providing access to technology and digital skills to to underprivileged kids around the world. So that can be in the slum areas in in Johannesburg or Nairobi or Mumbai for that matter, or it can be um, uh, be in low income families and communities around Europe and North America. Um, also focusing on on bridging the the gender gap in terms of digital access as well. So so today we're proud that we have reached 2.3 million kids, um, and we are going towards our goal of 4 million kids in in 2020. Um, and that of course also is in partnership with um, with our our partners around the world. Another example is our recent um, launch of our project with the. Uh, packaging based on ocean bound plastic where we launched uh, last year our project uh, where we're collecting plastics in coastal areas and waterways um, working with partners and, and local uh, waste collectors uh, to collect these plastics and then get it back into the economy by using it as uh, plastic uh, packaging for our our laptops um, we've committed to the UN environment that we will use uh, well we're using eight tons this first year but then we will scale that to 10 times that amount, so 80 tons per year in 2025. Now, that's only a small fraction of the amount of plastic that goes into the ocean. That's actually 8 million tons per year. So that's like 8 million small cars going into the ocean per year. It's an insane number. Um, what we are doing to scale up is to to now establish a partnership. We have uh, in December launched a consortium with the seven other uh, global companies, including General Motors and Interface, a carpet company, and Trek, the bicycle company. Seven other global companies who have committed to work with us on a long-term strategy to include ocean-bound plastics in their product and packaging so that together we can build a commercially viable and large-scale supply chain that will turn the tide and bring the plastics back into the economy. So, uh, so this is a great example of uh, of impact on uh, on the SDG 14. Now, turning to the next level of um, of action here, and I am again sorry for this, waiting for my screen to respond here. Seem to be having a little bit of technical problems. There we go. Next level is to, pour, to support customers uh, in their uh, to reach their sustainability goals because again we know that digital solutions are enablers uh, for resource efficiency, for smarter ways of doing things, for better healthcare, for better education around the world. And it's really in the hands of our customers and partners that that magic happens, that that the real impact happens. Um, so we are working to to assess. Uh, to develop a more, you can say, strategic approach to to do this um, with time. But of course, already now collecting the, the different cases and examples where we see ICT solutions uh, impacting um, the also the sustainable development goals. Uh, so one example here is our year-long partnership with the, the TGEN, um, 
Genomics Research Institute in the U.S. Uh, and the Gustave Rossi Hospital in France, where we are partnering uh, with them delivering technology to drive a new dimension in diagnostics and treatment of pediatric cancer care using high-performance computing to do the DNA analysis, which means that the diagnostics and, and analysis can be taken from, from several weeks and down to, to eight hours. So that means, of course, reducing the waiting time and in improving the uh, the quality of the diagnostics here which can save lives another example is uh, helping the supermarkets to build smarter cold chains with iot so again uh, supermarkets are of course using lots and lots of energy to cool their refrigerators um, and uh, and often actually cooling too much because uh, the last thing you want to have is food going bad because it wasn't cooled enough. So what we're helping to install is basically a level of intelligence with the Internet of Things, Big Data Analytics, so that um, they can adjust the level of um, of cooling according to what time of the day. So in the daytime, lots of cooling. In the nighttime, where nobody's opening the doors, you can keep it at lower lower cooling. Um, but also being able to monitor so that if there's any um, any errors, they can they can proactively uh, reach out with uh, with maintenance and thereby also saving foods. So inter interestingly enough, um, this has saved uh, in the implementation phase of this project with a UK supermarket. Um, this has saved seven million US dollars in energy costs and 49 percent production of food waste, which is of course another promising implementation here. There's somebody who is uh, making a bit of noise in the background. Could you mute yourself, please? Now, that's some customer examples. And again, we're looking into different areas, agriculture as well, healthcare, education, lots of ways where our solutions can play um, a role. And this leads me to our last part, which is integration into our 2030 sustainability strategy. So when our goals run out in 2020, we are, of course, ready with a new strategy. And of course, we have chosen 2030 to be to be the year and the scope. So, so we are looking into integrating there and building on our net positive value goal, which we have already in our 2020 strategy, that the good that will come from our technology will be 10 times what it takes to produce and use it. So already an aspirational goal here, which we're working to, where we're working with the Net Positive Project to, to develop the methodology for how to measure net positive impact on society and also how to align that to the SDG framework. And this is where we come back to uh, to, to the difficulty of a global collaboration project and a political process as well, because when you dive into the, um, the actual indicators, um, they come in many different levels um, if you look at a theory of change impact assessment. So one thing is to say, hey, we want to um, support um, youth learning or SDG 14, but to actually uh, do a, a precise and scientific impact assessment, that can be a challenge. We've done a methodological assessment study with Arizona State University diving into SDG 4, and in short, the conclusion is it's possible, but it's complicated. So, but let's not keep us uh, keep the measurement part, uh, keep us from doing um, doing the actual action. So, just here in the end to give you a, a sense of of the long journey that that we have been on uh, with our strategies here, and now of course we have reached 2018. Uh, our investigation into 2030 goals is already well on the way. Uh, we will report on our 2020 goals um, in 2021 and, of course, launch our 2030 goals. So looking forward to integrating. And we know that the world will look much different in 2030. We're looking at how digital transformation is changing the world, how the political situation is changing, uh, how our solutions can, can play a role in that, where we have the biggest risks and opportunities for people and planet and also for our business. So, so this is a large analysis. And we're taking our time to really integrate it because we believe that it really deserves that. This is not a, a quick fix to put a sticker uh, on your strategy, but really to, to make sure it's integrated in your core business. So with that, I will, um, I will uh, say thank you for this and, uh, and leave the word to, uh, to add or the next speaker. And please visit our website to, to check more information on, on our work. 
Thank you very much, Louise. Um, just to, as it, we were muted for a little bit at the beginning, don't worry. Um, you didn't miss much, you just missed my um, introduction. Um, had a couple of technical issues, so um, we just, all we covered was just the introduction of who was speaking. So we've, just to reconfirm, we've got Mario Abreu, from, who's the Vice President of the Environment for Tetra Pak. Louise Koch, who we just heard from, who's the Corporate Sustainability Lead for Dell. And we've got Aris Fretos, who's the Program Director at Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership. We ran a couple of polls um, just on, is your organization integrating, integrating the SDGs into business strategy, which came out at 60% of yes. And then on the flip side, are you measuring your contributions to the SDGs, which 60% said no. So yeah, again, sorry for the beginning where you um, didn't hear the introduction. Uh, Elon Musk is putting rockets into space and here at Ethical Corp, we're struggling with webinar technology. So there you are. Anyway, um, moving on. Um, next up, we've got Mario, um, who's going to be presenting his approach or Tetra Pak's approach um, with regards to the SDGs and integrating them into business operations. So um, over to you, Mario. Uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks very much for Ethical Corporation to, um, for the opportunity to present uh, Tetra Pak activities in support of the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, I understand you're going to be running my slides from there. There you are. Thank you. So if you can move to the first slide. Uh, what I'll do is I'll give you a, a brief introduction about the breadth of the Tetra Pak business and how, so that you can understand uh, how we can uh, impact uh, and support the sustainable development goals. Um, Tetra Pak is mostly well known as a global leading supplier of packaging for sensitive and perishable foods. We do, however, uh, develop food processing and packaging technologies with a very large breadth. For instance, we produce uh, processing equipment for the preparation of yogurts, cheese, coconut water, among many types of foodstuff. Therefore, the value chain in which we operate uh, stands, uh, extends from the sourcing of uh, mostly renewable materials like paperboard for the package, all the way through our factories around the world. And you see here in this slide that we have uh, uh, in over 175 uh, countries, we have a presence. Um, and uh, and you see also the number of packaging machines and processing units in operation. These are equipment sitting at our customer sites. So in regards to our design of the equipment, there will be a uh, relative, of course, consumption of electricity, water, and, and other utilities at our customers' plants. So this is all part of the, the scope that we, we consider in regards to the sustainable development goals. Ed, if you could move to the next slide, please. So, thank you. So, in, in 2016 and beginning of 2017, we embarked on a very thorough materiality assessment using the Generation 4 version of the Global Report Initiative, GRI. As you can see on the slide, we start by identifying internal and external stakeholders. Uh, with which to engage in this process. Then, uh, as we are a privately held company, we selected all the environmental and social indicators uh, from the GRIG4, uh, plus the general disclosure uh, on governance, and we apply that to the scope I just mentioned before. It's the packaging materials, packaging and processing equipment. So what we buy and the equipment at our customer sites. And then in regards to packaging material is also at the end of life uh, in regards to recycling and circularity of packaging. So then we took advantage of some existing processes that you can see there on the top on the on the pinkish area. Um, we, we have uh, an ongoing uh, survey where more than 300 customers are involved. And we do every second year a research with consumers where we have got more than 6,000 consumers involved in this research over 12 different countries across the world, from uh, US to Japan, China, uh, South America, Brazil, South Africa, Europe, so uh, about 12 countries. And then we also looked at uh, materiality assessments from customers. We looked at the cross-functional um, or cross-organizational uh, standards. 
uh, we looked at other initiatives and reporting platforms, and that formed the uh, expectation from external stakeholders. And we used the SDGs there as well. Um, um, and then internally, uh, we conducted uh, workshops uh, with 40 uh, VPs or functional leaders in the company. And we had a third party interviewing each of the members of our executive board uh, for one hour each. That provided us with a list of, uh, of priorities in regards to the most material uh, aspects for us to focus on and to report publicly on. So for the next slide, please. So what about the SDGs? What we, what we did then, uh, we, we chose to um, align, uh, if I can have the next slide, please. So what we did was we chose to align uh, the, the SDGs with these 14 most material aspects uh, that we have identified through the materiality assessment. And, um, and, and, and in order to do that, what you see on the screen, hopefully, is just a representation from the UN uh, SDG uh, page on, on the web. Um, and, and you probably all know this as you are interested in this workshop, but uh, this webinar. But in any case, um, in the page of the SDGs, for each one of the SDGs, you can identify the relative targets. Uh, so all in all, for the 17 SDGs, there are 169 targets. So what we did was we tried to assess these 169 uh, targets uh, to, in relation to our materiality assessment. We do support all of the 17 targets uh, of the SDGs, uh, and we know they are all mutually dependent, and we, and we know that they should all be accomplished by, by 2030. But we were asking ourselves, how can we make our contribution to the SDGs really, uh, real. Um, so, so the exercise we did, which did not take a lot of time, was we checked uh, out of the 169 targets which which of them we could see Tetra Pak contributing to, um, relating then to those 14 most material aspects, and then relating to the three pillars of our brand promise, which are to protect food protect people and protect futures. Um, if you are familiar with Tetra Pak packages, you may, may realize that in each one of them, there is a little symbol that says protects what's good. Uh, and that's what drives us. So protecting food, protecting people and protecting futures is our way of, uh, of uh, defining what, he, what it is to protect what's good. Uh, in the next slide, then, you will see what the final result is, or the final product of these exercises. Um, uh, so if I can have the next slide. Yeah, thank you. So here you see on the right-hand side the three pillars of our brand position, food, protecting food, protecting futures, protecting people. And then you see on the, on the left-hand side, you see um, the SDGs, and you see the top material aspects. So um, we, we could find a very deep connection between the, the position we have, the sustainability strategy we have, and the UN development goals. That connection made the SDGs front and center to our sustainability activities, goals, and commitments. So every time uh, we report on an annual basis about our sustainability strategy, we are we have identified through the GRID4, we have identified the indices that are going to be used to report on that progress and connected, and we are going to be connecting those indices to the SDGs. Um, perhaps a word of caution there. When when we started looking at the 169 targets, we thought that they were actually a bit overwhelming because when you look at them from the perspective of a of a business organization. Um, you, you see that um, they sometimes are not written in a language that a business organization would actually, you know, uh, recognize as something that is actionable for them. If you take the SDG 13 on climate action, for instance, um, most of the targets are written, focus on national governments. Um, but then we thought to ourselves, you know, uh, despite the reading, how can we actually um, you know, consider our our impact, and and we thought um, that um, 
you know, in regards to climate action, we are doing, you know, a number of things. One, we are producing renewable energy in some of our own factories. So we're creating a renewable energy in, in a number of countries. Two, we are buying renewable energy certificates when we can prove additionality. So we are helping to create renewable energy production in countries. And then three, some of our suppliers are expanding their use of renewable electricity as well. Therefore, we are both creating demand for and we're increasing the generation of renewable uh, electricity. This contributes to the, to the um, ambition behind the targets in the SDG 13, we believe so. So we could make that type of, a, of, a, of, relation, of relationship. The, the capacity of any individual or business to contribute to the SDG is of course quite small. Hence, uh, we believe this is another reason to promote everyone should be using it. Only, uh, we believe that only a global and concerted effort by investors, by business, by regulators, and also by individual citizens will make the SDGs work. And we, we have to make them work by 2030. So thanks again for the opportunity. I do hope this was a helpful suggestion for colleagues uh, listening to us now uh, as a way of working with the SDGs you, if, you, if you are working for a business company. And we have also contributed to a piece of great work produced by Aris and his colleagues at the Cambridge Institute of Sustainability Leadership. But I'll leave that for him to talk about in the next segment. So for now, thank you very much for, for the attention. Thank you very much, Mario, for that. Um, and we're going to drop to um, head over to Aris now just to finish the presentations. And then we'll um, open up to a bit more of a discussion. So Aris, if you would. Great, thank you very much. Um, so thanks everybody for joining the the, um, the webinar. And it's um, it's great to be with with everyone today and to be talking uh, with um, forward looking companies such as Tetra Pak and and Dell. I am um, uh, we have a different um, a little bit of a sort of a different angle to to the SDG. So I'm going to go through a little bit our our, our own thinking and our rationale and and some of the work that that we are doing and how we are seeing some of the questions that Luis and, and, and Mario were uh, starting to, to address and uh, what the university's kind of a contribution and CIS health contributions um, might be. So very quickly to start with, I um, we have the, the Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership, we have a 10-year plan to create the enabling environment uh, for the SDGs and that is our reward in the economy. Plan. And, and that includes uh, business policymakers and, and investment and finance professionals, so our, our core network, uh, if you like, going back to what Mario was describing, a kind of a, a holistic, systemic view of what needs to change to uh, be able to deliver the SDGs. The second thing that we do is, uh, as you might expect from an academic institution, is uh, a lot of research and, 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 and development, uh, as well as education and um, working with um, uh, companies and other groups, and, and Mario mentioned some, one of the projects that we did, try to answer difficult questions uh, regarding the SDGs. And it, it, here on this slide, you see the kind of the cover of the report that we put together, specifically aiming at understanding the commercial imperative for uh, implementing the, the, the SDGs. And then we, we, we work, as you might expect, again, from an institution like us, on capacity building and um, uh, helping individual organizations with their approaches to, to the SDG. So we take kind of this three-pronged um, um, uh, approach, which has shaped our thinking when it comes to the goals. The other thing to say before we move on to the next slide is there's two big features on, that um, characterize the SDGs. The first one is their interconnectedness. The fact that um, almost all of the, the, the goals are codependent, almost all of the companies in delivering the goals depend on one another. So there's lots of synergies, but also a lot of unintended consequences. So having a clear view of what some of those might be means that uh, interventions are much more effective. And the second thing is their timing, their, their ambition, the level of ambition and their, their, their scale. Very comprehensive, very ambitious, cover all kinds of aspects of, 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 of business, and the time frame is, is very challenging the next 12 years or so. So 
what it's it, it's important for us to look at um, what we're faced with, what what the case is, and, and and understand the choices. At the moment, we're still heading towards what we would consider to be a business as usual trajectory, um, and and um, that we, we tried with this um, with with the report that we did to try to assess. Well, what does that mean? What are the commercial implications of not move into a path where we can deliver the SDGs. What does business lose um, in terms of uh, um, growth, innovation, relationships, and so on, if we fail to meet the SDGs? And then, um, on, on the other hand, what are the potential gains? What if we were able to move to a sustainable economy and get make that big shift in that trajectory? And, and, and look at what are the benefits for business. And, and I think each, this is something that each company also and each sector also needs to do to be able to build a solid commercial case uh, for both the opportunities, and there's been lots of great work that Sustainable Development Commission and others have come up with some really telling numbers about the size of the opportunity, but also the cost of inaction. And, and, um, and, and what we, we came up with, uh, loads of, we work with, uh, Tetra Pak and other uh, forward-looking companies from construction and health and, and retail and so on, and we found a very stark, a very clear business case of, yes, there's loads of positive opportunities uh, in moving to a sustainable economy, new markets, growth, more demand, better stakeholder relationships, long-term resilience, ability to innovate and so on, very specifically laid out in, in, in this report. But also we, we, we found big risks such as, you know, for the health sector, some of the markets will be very difficult to grow if we do not meet the SDGs because, um, because of environmental stability and, and basic well-being challenges, money will be diverted elsewhere. The construction sector has um, serious issues regarding security and, and, and how that connects to resource security, environmental stability, and so on. So the, the question becomes about business stability and continuity. And, and I think it, 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 we found that it's a very helpful way to look at the case on the one hand. On the other hand, we have to acknowledge that it's not going to be straightforward. It's not going to be very easy to move if we need such a radical shift, then we need to engage different parts in society, business, finance, policy makers. Structural transformations must be involved, so business needs to be prepared with that. And what this kind of complicated slide um, looks, um, kind of depicts, is the need for a systemic, forward-looking, a collaborative strategy to approach the, the goals. Um, on the right-hand side, you see what we've done, um, to, hearing from the companies we work with, the overwhelming nature of the SDGs, we grouped the 17 goals into six areas of, of interest, resource security, basic needs, ecosystems, well-being, climate stability, and decent work, um, and, and um, to, to, see, uh, to make it easier to be integrated. And then we, 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 we saw how, who needs to be involved, how do we, best make this a, a, a reality. And so we take those six priorities. How do we enable them and how do we engage finance, government and business? And we came up with 10, what we call 10 rewiring tasks, um, which is part of the plan. Some for policymakers, some for investors. And part of the work that we do is um, engaging with the investment community. If you go to the CSL website and look for the investment leaders group, you'll see a whole series of work specifically on the SDGs, metrics and how uh, investors and asset managers can measure their impacts and so on. But the essence here is how can, um, if we don't take a big view, if we don't look into the future, if we don't look at the entire system, and if we don't look at the potential opportunities between the different players, it is very unlikely that we will be able, A, to meet the SDGs, and B, do it in a way that it will be cost-effective and efficient. And so, um, the, if we move then to, to the final slide, is, and, and, and Mario and Luis have already outlined some, some great ideas about how companies, you know, it, it, not all companies will be able to take a really forward-looking systemic view. That's to be understood. And more than that, 
quite a lot of companies will take different approaches to the SDG. Some will look at four or five sets of goals, others will look at 10, 12 sets of goals. What we've, we've thought is, we've, we've, through the work we've done, we've identified a couple of steps. The first one is, you know, the, build the case. So in that, do the scenario planning. How, how your business model looks in 2030, um, if you, we meet the goals, if we don't meet the goals, do some bad, some bad casting. These are relatively simple things that, that can be done, but they have to be done to create a good um, business case for the company to then take action. The second one is um, to evaluate, and I'm very pleased to hear that Louise and, and Mario were talking about targets, not this kind of the sticker exercise where companies kind of cherry pick and say, right, this looks familiar, this sounds relevant, but actually going through the 169 targets and seeing, hey, where do we have an impact? Where can we make a contribution? Where are we more aligned? And then prioritize based on that. And I guess then the, the, the crucial step for, for me, and, I, and um, I'll, uh, I'll pause here, is to review the corporate strategy. I think, and this goes back to the voting that we did earlier, I think it will be a missed opportunity to take the SDGs, and we see companies um, taking on the opportunity, and not change. It, it, it will be very difficult to meet the SDGs and get the most value without making changes to the corporate strategy to accommodate them, make sure that business activities do not undermine them. And, and that is kind of working, if you like, in, in a more integrated way. And of course, you know, we have methodologies of how we work with individual companies and how we um, advise them kind of how to select the right targets or what to do with when the gap is X or Y and so on. But that's not as important as I think the investment and the commitment to look at the strategy and look at the corporate KPIs and see how do we best leverage what we have um, as, as a business. And, I, and then sort of four steps, uh, four and five, five is what you would normally do. Four is, is kind of, if you like, the holy, the big opportunity of the SDGs. Most value related to the goals will be shared between companies and between sectors. So identifying the organizations that are able to identify those opportunities, both between goals but also between sectors, are the ones that, by changing the business model, we see are starting to create more value for all stakeholders, including their shareholders. And that's it for, 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 for me, Ed. Thank you. Thanks very much, Aris, for that. Um, we're get, now going to the last 15 minutes have a bit of a uh, discussion from a couple of the questions um, that are coming through. Just just to know, um, just to know as well, um, you can the, for those listening, you can ask questions. Uh, and there's a question box just on the right hand side. Um, if you haven't noticed that already, just to, if you've got any burning questions you'd like to um, ask the speakers, we'll try and get through them um, within the next 15 minutes. Um, and on your screens right now, you can see um, just a slide for. Um, one of the conferences we're running, which is related to the, the webinar we're running today, which is covering the SDGs um, and how you integrate those into, um, into your business um, in a host of webinar uh, workshops and um, panel discussions as well. The 17th uh, Responsible Business Summit Europe, which is taking place in, in June. Um, anyway, just to move on and we'll start, get going with some questions. So um, we've had a question come through um, from our system on in terms of what principles or, or values um, are you using to, to, to ensure that there is alignment with the SDG goals? Um, I'd like just to pose that to yourself, Louise. Yes, so which principles are we using? I'm not sure I quite yes. understand the question. Could you unfold it a bit, please? So in terms of the the, the the values behind what you're using as a guiding decision um, to ensure that you, what you're doing is in line with um, the goals as well. What what's is that coming from um, company ethos or your, your your company values? What's the underlying behind right. those? I mean, so the underlying um, leadership behind our our sustainability strategy is. Is that this is part of of the company DNA? This has been part of 
of uh, Michael Dell's uh, vision with the company uh, to begin with to to drive human progress and 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 be a, a responsible business, and and we might be fortunate in that sense to actually still be a privately owned company now the world's biggest um, technology company that are privately owned. Um, so 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 that is us that this is a priority, but then of course based on a sound materiality analysis. And um, and this is back to again having a, a sound assessment of what the world looks like, and of course the global goals, the SDGs themselves are a very thorough mapping of what the world looks like and and where we need to to focus uh, our time. So so I would say uh, definitely the values behind is is business driven as well. We also see this as a business differentiator. Um, so. So we do this because we want to be an ethical company, um, but of course also because we see that this is a business driver. We see that this is uh, expectation from increasingly expectation from customers. Now we we haven't been waiting for customers to tell us to do this, but we're we're definitely listening now that customers are increasingly asking for for documentation of our CSR performance. And the next level here is then for us to to work more directly with customers and say, okay, let's look at how our solutions not only let Laptops, but also IoT uh, servers, storage uh, apps—you uh, name it—can help you to to drive your sustainability goals. Okay, excellent. Thanks very much for that um, insight, Louise. I've got a question to um, all the panelists um, are present. So, in terms of your supply chain um, and how important that is in terms of um, reaching um, your targets with the sustainable development goals. How do you, taking into account the hundreds of thousands of suppliers globally, how important is that supply chain um, and the participation of that supply chain in in, in reaching the SDGs? And, um, if Mario, what what's your intake, your take on that? Ed, um, we what we what we have been doing for for a long time now is we have understood what are the most priority. Uh, suppliers to us that we call, um, you know, base material suppliers, and we have um, long-standing collaboration with them, which has enabled us to set something that we call the uh, future state, desired future state. So we we have anchored a number of different goals and and targets uh, in regards to. Um, um, Carbon in regards to uh, responsible land use, uh, forest management. So um, we we have incorporated uh, when we did the materiality assessments I was referring to. We actually were able to connect uh, SDGs in regards to responsible production and consumption, in regards to land use, in regards to climate action. We could we could incorporate or relate those SDGs to activities we already had in place and reinforce them under the principle that um, you know this is a this is a joint effort and as I referred to before um, we see many of our suppliers uh, coming with increased uh, goals and and targets on renewable electricity for instance uh, which is very much in line with reduced carbon footprint and and addressing uh, climate as part of the SDGs. Aris, do you have any thoughts on that at Go on, sorry, Louise, if you're jumping in. Yes, yeah, so I would, would love to add to that as well. I agree with Mario that this is this is work that has been ongoing, and and for us uh, being in in the IT sector, we uh, we co-founded the uh, the Electronics Industry Citizenship Coalition in 2004, which is uh, a, an industry coalition to um, to to work together to drive. Uh, good working conditions and environmental protection and supply chain. So there's a whole set of around this with shared, you know, principles, code of conduct based on on the UN Global Compact, based on the ILO core workers' rights, based on human rights, um, UN conventions on on um, on environment, etc. So there's a whole big system there with the principles, with the auditing system, the training system, the follow-up uh, of suppliers, where they are all committed to following this in order to do business with us. Um, so, uh, so I know that the ICC now now is called the Responsible Business Alliance. Um, because it's broadening the scope beyond electronics industry, um, they are looking into, you know, the alignment with the SDGs in terms of of what they're already doing. 
but I think this is a good example of of where we should be cautious as well, not to you know throw the baby out with the bathwater, not to say oh now everything has to be the SDGs because there are some really strong programs for supply chain responsibility that are built on these programs, um, built on the UN guiding principles for business and human rights as well, um, and I think we kind of still need to 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 bridge this in in terms of of looking ahead to make sure that that we are creating synergy and building on top of these things instead of uh, throwing something away. Aris, have you got any um, thoughts on the, the question? So the original question was regarding to um, the involvement of your supply chain partners um, in mapping the SDGs, progressing to the so, target so, of the SDGs. So the, the one thing, I think Mario and Liz covered it really well. The one thing I would add is that um, the, the SDGs have this kind of a wonderful attribute where they are global in nature, but they're also quite local. And so when we're thinking about supply chains and companies such as Dell and Tetra Pak, you know, they work with many, many different countries, all of which face very different issues. And, and what, we're, we're, what we're seeing over the last couple of years is, you know, we need to make people a priority. We, we need to kind of bring people on, on, on the journey and kind of the, the interaction at the, the community level. Uh, both in terms of managing environmental and resource security issues, but also building the local capacity to be able to become more resilient and address some of those issues, even though that might not be part of a supplier questionnaire or explicitly bringing them into the process, with, in, with regards to actually enabling those suppliers to meet the SDGs, that's becoming more and more in, important, I think, in, in recent years. I'd just like to um, bring it to a point of, um, as well, of in terms of the strategies you're using to monitor and report um, your progress, what are they and um, how are you going about monitoring and reporting on your um, progress towards um, the SDGs and targets that you're particularly focusing on? Um, Mario? Uh, Ed, we, you know, so w what we what we are doing now is identifying what are the best indicators really because as i said before you know when when you look at the existing target they they somehow um in in many instances they are really overwhelming in the sense that uh they seem to be very often um you know written with with policy makers in mind and so on so um it can be quite tricky to be able to on one hand say i'm committing to the to this specific target and then don't feel that you are just being, you know, um, uh, just too too small, too little in, in regards to what you can do. Um, so um, we have been using indicators associating, associated to GRIG4 and relate those indicators to the SDGs. Um, but in the same time, what we're trying to understand better is what mechanisms could be used more, more generally uh, so that it would be um, easier, it could be more, uh, you know, more more feasible um, for United Nations, for for global compact uh, to perhaps being able to consolidate and identify how much progress is really being done. Uh, if we try to avoid creating very different indicators for the same types of targets, um, and and to the point that Aris was raising before, you know, when when in one of his slides he mentioned that uh, there are specific tasks for government, specific tasks for investors and for business. Um, this is part of this equation. How do we make sure that what we have as indicators um, are meaningful, uh, meaningful indicators that, that really can show contribution to a very large, very broad set of goals, which are the SDGs? Louise, any thoughts? Yes, yes, let me just unmute myself again here. Um, yes, I would say the same thing uh, as I mentioned before. We have been looking into, uh, together with the Arizona State University, taking a deep dive into how do we measure the impact of ICT solutions on SDG 4. Um, 
and and again diving into each of the the targets and each of the indicators and looking at country level or impact level um so if you really want to do the the proper scientific uh impact measurement then then you need a, a few phds on your team for sure it's it's relatively complicated um i know there's also work groups out there um simplifying these frameworks and trying to to convert them to to business indicators so, um, and I think that will be necessary in order to to generate the the broad um, um, engagement from from business, uh, because we might have or we do have uh, several hundred uh, front runner companies globally, uh, but we have hundred thousands, millions of companies that we also want to bring on board. So, so in this uh, with this situation, I do believe that that we also need to look at how do we simplify the impact uh, measurement of our our contribution to the SDG. Okay, excellent. Um, we're just going to go to one last um, question. I was just going to ask for Aris's thoughts on that, um, the previous question, and then uh, in terms of reporting, um, and then we're going to go to a, a final question. So if anyone's got any burning questions they'd like to ask, um, please do write them in now. So Aris, in terms of um, what we've just been discussing with regards to um, reporting, um, and monitoring your SDG um, impacts. What, what what advice would you have on that point? Well, I, I uh, in, on on the one hand, it, the SDGs could potentially just slot in into whatever um, systems for communicating and transparency in organizations have already, provided these are effective. And I guess. Um, um, if not, then establishing a monitoring system to assess projects and sort of a contribution to the SDGs becomes critical. I think one of the, the, the projects we are just involved in is, and I think a great opportunity is not just to um, for, for organizations to really measure their impact and contribution. It's not just to see uh, where they're doing good work in the SDGs, but where is it that there is a gap between those goals and targets that are relevant um, acknowledging all the caveats that Mario and Louise mentioned that you know we have to translate the, the targets and the indicators to business language, but where, where, where there is a gap between those that are relevant and, and, and where, where the company is or what is aspired to be at the moment, and, I, and I, um, let's, we can call it an alignment gap or however you want to call it. And I think the second thing that is becoming important because of a 2030 timeline is to have a bit of a roadmap to see, okay, we're going to tackle this in the short term because these are our priority goals or this is where we feel we can make more direct contribution or so on and so on. And then in the medium term, this is how our responsibility, our sphere of influence, our network changes. And then ultimately, this is what we want to achieve. And, you know, 10 years is not a really long time. So putting that vision and roadmap out there for other people to engage with, I think that will also be quite important. Thank you, Aris. Right, so we're going to just go to one last question. Um, it's a question we've had um, come in um, with regards to buy-in. So, um, how do you get buy-in that's from across the business on the goals? On the on the goals, sorry. So, is is there a risk that um, the SEGs can be easily dismissed by business executives from a, not just from a sustainability function, but across the business that it's just another UN initiative. And if you are facing um, such pushback, how, how do you get past um, this within the business and make it and get a buy-in from across the whole business with regards to the SDGs and it's not just simply a, a sustainability um, issue or strategy? Um, Louise? Yes, I think uh, it's important to to definitely know who are you talking to. So if you're with the finance guys, make sure that you have the business case right. And there's lots of numbers and reports out there now, also with the endorsement of uh, of great business leaders like Paul Pullman from Unilever. Um, so, and if you're speaking to the guys in the uh, packaging department, then you're probably looking at the use of, uh, of natural resources. So, um, so 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 make sure that you don't speak the over the broad SDG language all the time, but really translate it into what does what does this mean for for the person you're talking to in the company. So you have to do a bit of um, of kind of 
um, chunking it down to to um, to more detailed uh, real life situations for the person you're talking to, and uh, and I agree also um, with what was said before that that it's also good to assess you know you can assess the business opportunity, but definitely also the cost of inaction that in itself should also be a quite clear business case. Okay, thank you, Louise. And, and Mario, what are your thoughts on, on the question with regards to um, how you get buy-in from across the business on the SDGs? Yeah, I, um, I think we, we were quite lucky that we have had as one of the four strategic pillars of our business to drive sustainability. So we, and this, this was set in 2011, you were 2020 ambitions. So what, we are, what we're doing is we are adding the SDGs as they came uh, two years ago to to that uh, to that strategy for me the biggest challenge is the question you know are we relevant enough to 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 have to have to have to have uh, uh, action plans in place and to be able to contribute uh, so um, but as as part of a bigger company strategy you know the SPs were very welcome in in the sense of uh, uh, giving giving things a bit more of of a, of a shape. Thank you, Mario. So we're gonna we're gonna tie things up now. Um, and the last um, thing that I'd like to ask all the speakers is just to summarise your top three tips. Um, so what are your top three tips for our listeners um, when it comes to integrating the SDGs into your business operations? Um, Aris, I'd like to to go to you first. Um, thank you, Ed. I, I guess the, um, um, the, the the biggest uh, a, a great starting point is to, to have a to, to have a view of, of what the SDGs mean. So, what it doesn't have to be really complicated, but look into the future. Look at you know uh, into do the, that scenario planning, that cost risk assessment. Try and and, and and develop an overall narrative of what the SDGs could deliver for the business and what would uh, the impacts be if, if that's not the case. I guess the other important thing is don't waste the opportunity that the SDGs provide to make some uh, essential and, and forward-looking changes to the business, to the strategy, to the way the organization does things. Um, I think that's, that's something that the SDGs were designed to do. And some of the difficult buying questions is how do we change business models? How do we start working with others much more collaboratively that we've done? So it's a great, you know, it's a global framework, a global strategy. We've all agreed to it. To, you know, we, we, it's a great opportunity to create some of those big changes um, in, in the organization. And, and, and finally, I agree with what Luis said. Don't, don't talk about the goals um, as a sort of a, as something that's kind of out there as much as possible, and there are many, many examples these days in story. You know, frame the story which is relevant to the organization. Mario, um, your top three tips for the listeners out there? Well, I think Ari said it very well. I, I think, you know, this is a concerted effort that is needed. So um, everyone has to understand what the organization or the business they are in can do. And I think the uh, the main thing for me is, uh, take the time, uh, look at the SDGs and the targets, he, see how we can influence them with what you do, with what your organization can do, and uh, go for it. And finally, Luis? Yes, from my side, I would say, first, take a good look at all the inspiration that's out there in terms of best practice, in terms of framework to integrate the SDGs into business strategy. There's really a, a good bunch of work out there now, and I think it's amazing how far we've come, you know, in less than two and a half years after the, the goals were launched by, by the General Assembly in the UN. Uh, secondly, um, don't lose sight of the, of the, you know, of the, um, of the do no harm. So there's definitely still uh, the basics in the CSR needs to be in place in terms of protecting people, protecting the environment. Um, and then thirdly, while you do that, also really embrace the the innovation opportunities. Uh, I would see the SDGs as a list of innovation opportunities for business to dive in and see how can we use our core competencies and technologies to to support um, the, the the progress on, on these goals through customers and partners. 
Thank you, Louise. Um, firstly, as well, um, thanks to all the speakers who have um, shared their insights today. And thank you to all the listeners, um, the two, two and a half thousand people who have signed up for this webinar and the, the thousand or so who have um, signed in live. Um, it's been a great discussion, but unfortunately, time's run out. Um, everyone who hasn't signed up to this webinar, you will be receiving, receiving a recording and we'll be, we'll be sending all the information out within the next couple of weeks. If your questions weren't answered, um, you can raise this with our speakers and 600 more participants at the Responsible Business Summit Europe, which is taking place on the 13th and 14th of June. Um, the SDGs will be covered in great depth, um, and we've got an excellent key keynote session um, with Pedro Orton, who unfortunately can be with us today from the European Commission, and Lisa Kingo, the CEO and Exec Director of the UN Global Compact. Um, Hope to see you there in June. Um, and if you'd like further information on the event, please go to events.ethicalcorp.com forward slash RBS. Once again, thank you very much for listening and see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.